Good day, everyone, and welcome back to my channel. This time, I discuss nothing about frequency distribution, or also known as presentation of data. Frequency distribution table. It is a statistical table showing the frequency or number of observations contained in each of the defined classes or categories. The observations that we're talking about here, class, ito yung data set or scores. Let's have an example of statistical table. Let's have table one. This one is the table heading. And ito ay perception of individual behavior and caption. Part is the classes. And this part and the frequency. Each frequency, the add it to lahat, the total is 100, the total number of frequency. There are different types of frequency distribution table. The first type is known as qualitative or categorical FET. It is a frequency distribution takes where the data are grouped according to some qualitative characteristics. Data are to non-numerical categories. Example, ito yung characteristic and group according to non-numerical categories, which is the male and the female. Then dito sa frequency part, the number of respondents, 38 for male respondents and 62 for female respondents. Then i-add lang ito, the total is 100 respondents. That's an example of qualitative or categorical FT. Another type of frequency distribution known as quantitative frequency distribution table. Frequency distribution table where the data are grouped according to some numerical or quantitative characteristics. Example, table three. This one is the category and group according to quantitative characteristics. So we have seven to nine kilograms, 10 to 12 kilograms, 13 to 15 kilograms, and so on. Itong 7 to 9, the lower limit is 7, and the upper limit is 9. So we have 7, lower limit, 10, lower limit, 13, lower limit. The upper limits are 9, 12, 15, 18, 21. Ito naman ay frequency. Ang 2, ibig sabihin nito, there are 2 pieces of luggage all from 7 to 9 kilograms. And how many pieces of luggage that fall from 10 to 12 kilograms there are? Okay. I add ito lahat, ang total ay 50 pieces of luggage. This example is for quantitative frequency distribution. Question is, paano mag-construct ng frequency distribution table? What you only need to master yung four steps in constructing frequency distribution. Ang first step ay pag-determine kung ilang classes ang kailangan. So, determine the appropriate number of classes. Itong classes, balikan natin yung example kanina. Ito yung mga classes. So, in this example, there are how many classes? One, two, three, four, five. Ang five classes, that can be answered for step number one. For you to determine the adequate number of classes, you have to use this formula, also known as storage approximation. K is equal to 1 plus 3.322 log n. Itong 1 is constant. 3.322 is constant. Log of n. n is the variable. Kung ilan yung numbers or observations or data set, yan ang substitute ko sa n. Step number 2, determine the range. Very simple lang range. Just determine the highest score. Then, subtract yan sa lowest score. So, highest score minus lowest score. The result is the range. Step number three, compute for the class size. So, ang class size is represented by letter C. It can be computed sa answer ng step number two divide by the answer of step number one. Ang answer nito should be rounded to the next whole number. Step number four, choose the lowest or smallest observation as the lower class limit of the first. After solving step one, step two, step three, and step four, that's the time you will start constructing 
your frequency distribution table. Let's have an example. The following data are the ages of 64 parents of students at a certain school in Infanta. How many parents of students? Those are 64. Let's check. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 8 times 8, 64. So our example data is already validated that there are 64 parents of students in a certain school in Infanta, Quezon. Let's have step number one. Sabi ng step number one. Determine the appropriate number of classes. So how? 1 plus 3.322 log of n. Our n this time is 64. So you may use your calculator or your cell phone in determining the answer for step number one. In your calculator, if it is a scientific calculator, all you have to do is just press 1 plus 3.322 log of 64 then equals the result would be 7 or log 64 equals times 3.322 equals plus 1 the result if you have noticed meron point zero zero, so up to two decimal places dito copy nyo yan for step number 1 up to two decimal places and step number 2 highest minus lowest what's the highest score the highest score is 68, and the lowest score is 21. So 68 minus 21, it is 47. Then you divide the answer of step number two, so step number one. So 47 divided by 7 equals 6.7. So according to the rule, you have to round this to the next whole number, which is equal to 7. But on step number four, lower class limit of the first class is 21. Therefore, we have to start sa 21. We will now construct frequency distribution. Our first column would be class limit. Second is frequency. Third is the class mark. Fourth is the class boundaries. And third, less than chromatic frequency. How to determine now the first entry for the class limit? According to the rule, we have to start with the lowest value. The lowest value is 21. Then what 21 to what number? Now we have to check the class size. The class size is seven. So you will just start from 21. 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27. So the first class limit is 21 to 27. Or other process would be, you will just subtract one. So 7. So 7 minus 1, it is 6. And 21 plus 6 is 27. That's why the first class limit, we have 21 to 27. So what would be the entry for frequency? Ang gagawin dito ay bibilangin natin kung ilang numbers na fall from 21 to 27. Ito yung given set of data. So we have 21 to 27. 1, 2, 3, 4. Four, five, six, seven. So there are seven scores from 21 to 27. And class mark, very easy. You just add 21 and 27. So 21 plus 27 is 48. Then divide by two. So 48 divided by two is 20. And class boundaries, you just, you just subtract. 0.5 so 21 add 0 0.5 to so 27. Therefore, magiging 20.5 to 27.5. And less than cumulative frequency, kung ano ang first entry dito, yan ang magiging first entry dito sa less than cumulative frequency. So that's 7. Our next class would be what? Remember, there are 7 classes here. Ang answer sa number 1. So that's 27. So that would be 28. Yung sabi ko kanina, 7 minus 1, 6. So 28 plus 6 is 34. So that would be 28 to 34. Then we have to count how many scores from 20, 
how many scores fall from 28 to 34? So, bibilang dito one by one yung pasok sa 28 to 34. Siyempre, binilang ko na yan. There are 11 scores that fall from 28 to 34. Class mark, 28 plus 34 divided by 2 equals 31. And class boundaries, minus 0.5 plus 0.5. So 27.5, 34.5. And less than cumulative frequency, 7, he add sa 11. So 7 plus 11 equals 18. Let's proceed. 34 would be 35. Next would be 35. So 35 plus yung 7 minus 1 equals 6. So 35 plus 6 equals 41. Then, bibilangin na naman natin how many numbers fall from 35 to 41 or 13. Then, ang class mark, 35 plus 41 divided by 2 equals 38. Same process for class boundaries. Minus 0. 0.5 plus 0. 0.5. And bakit ang 31? Kasi 18 plus 13 plus 31. Then, just continue the process. The same process hanggang dito. Remember, the number of classes is 7. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And you add all the frequency, it should be equal to 64. Dito sa less than cumulative frequency, dapat ang last na entry is equal to 64. So that's frequency distribution table of the ages of six parents of students in a certain school in Infanta. After constructing the frequency distribution, it would be better to present the data in graphical form. So there are different kinds of graph. A graph is a device for showing numerical values or relationship in pictorial form. Ang advantages nito, ang main feature is an implication of a body of data can be seen at once, makikita kagad. And it can attract attention and hold the reader's interest. The graph simplifies concepts that would otherwise have been expressed in so many words. And the graph can readily clarify data, frequently bring out hidden facts and relationships. Anong qualities of a good graph? It is accurate, it is clear, it is simple, it is a good appearance. And common types of graph, you have scatter graph, line graph, pie graph, column graph, bar graphs. And let's have some illustrations of the different kinds of graph or frequency histogram. It is coming from a frequency distribution table. So yung picture ng frequency histogram. Ang relative frequency histogram, this one. This, these entries are in percent form. Frequency ogives looks like this. Frequency polygon. That uh, that graph. Other types of graphs, you also have pie graph, bar graph, we have, of course, line graph, and we have scatter plot. That's it. So we're done with frequency distribution, also known as data presentation. Again, wag nyong kalimutan, mag-subscribe para palagi kang updated sa lecture series. Ang next lecture, next video natin ay upload is about sampling. So that would be an exciting topic. That's that is for all now. Bye.